people who don't necessarily need these drops are wanting to get these drops, thinking that perhaps it will give them wider, brighter, bigger, more bold, doe-ish eyes. And the question is, do they really do that? So when I saw that there were drops that you could put in your eyes that could help to lift your lids, that could you know, help to give like wider and brighter eyes, I was totally intrigued. Now, these drops are actually kind of prescription. They're meant to be used if you have something called ptosis. So they're meant to be used if you have Botox that's drifted and caused your eyelids to droop. Maybe you have acquired droopy eyes over the course of your life because of aging. You might have droopy eyelids because of a specific medical condition. All of those are reasons why you may have in the past gotten these eye drops to open up the eyes. Now, in recent months or maybe a year, these eye drops are being marketed more towards the aesthetic community. So people who don't necessarily need these drops are wanting to get these drops, thinking that perhaps it will give them wider, brighter, bigger, more bold, doe-ish eyes. And the question is, does that work? Did they really, do they really do that? Recently, while I was on a trip, I was able to pick up a box of these drops. They're called Upnique. Now, a box of them is not cheap. It is around $200, depending on where you buy it. And you get 45 individually wrapped little droppers like this. And each one is obviously single use, but it's meant to be used. You can use it obviously just in one eye, you can use it in both eyes. And really the question for me was, will it work on someone like me? Now I did have upper blepharoplasty and I definitely don't feel like I need a ton of lift, but like everyone else, if I could get wider, brighter, you know, bigger eyes, kind of like when I was younger, sure, I'm game for that as well. But I also decided that I was gonna recruit a few other people at different ages so that we could kind of assess how it works on lots and lots of different people who are not sponsored, who are not paid, who are, you know, unaffiliated with Upneek in any way, and we could assess. So I'm gonna put all of those before and after pictures at the end of this video, and you can be the judge. And I I would love for you to let me know in the comments if you see a difference. It'll be it'll be really really curious to me if any of you can assess change in any of the four ladies, myself included, who went ahead and did this little upneak challenge. So let's talk about what these are. Like I said, they're eye drops. They come individually wrapped, which <laughs> we can talk about because that seems to be a source of. You know, a lot of people don't love that. You get a lot of plastic in this box because imagine you get 45 of these plastic droppers and they come, you twist the lid off and then and then you use them single use. And each one of those comes wrapped in a package like this. So you get a big, you get a box of a bunch of wrapping. You really do. Now, I know, you know, I'm not a an ophthalmologist or anything like that. So there may be a reason why these have to be for sterility or something like that, why they have to be individually packaged, I'm not really sure. But that is kind of an interesting packaging decision because it's a lot of plastic and it's a lot of packaging. So that is definitely something to take into consideration. So how do these work? Essentially, these are vasoconstrictors and they work in a really similar fashion. They have a similar main ingredient to a nasal spray like Afrin. So they are, instead of constricting the blood vessels and causing a contraction, they're actually causing a contraction in your eyelid, which causes it to lift. It is actually affecting a levitator a muscle in your eyelid causing your eyelid to lift. The average amount of lift that an eyelid would get in their studies and on their, you know, before and afters on the Upneak page, which I will link in the description box, they get about one millimeter. Now, I know that one millimeter doesn't sound like very much, but if you actually had ptosis, if you actually had a droopy eyelid, especially if you had one and the other wasn't, I think a millimeter can make a really, really huge difference for, for you if it helped you with your vision or really if it just helped you with your self-esteem because the thing about having drooping eyelids, it can make you look a way that you don't actually feel. It can make you look tired, it can make you look sad, it can make you look older, and inside you may not feel any of those things. And so it's another one of those visual markers and we all notice eyes 
really very, very quickly into an encounter, you notice someone's eyes and they can immediately give kind of a feeling of an emotion that doesn't actually exist if you have these drooping eyelids. So I completely can see the place for these eye drops if you have a genuine ptosis and you have that need. Now the makers of Upneek say that each drop, you just have to do one in each eye daily, can last up to six hours. So it can do that lifting and brightening of the whites of your eyes for about six hours. And I will definitely let you know my results when we get to the end and we discuss the before and afters. There are some side effects that have been reported. They were reported in like 1%, maybe 1.5% of the people that they um, studied or tested these on. And there were things like headache, blurred vision, eye pain, things like that. But again, it seemed to be a very, very small percentage. Now, if you are a contact wearer or if you like to use other eye drops, like I love to use my Lumify, you just have to wait 15 minutes. So you would want to do your eye drops, wait 15 minutes at least, and then put your contacts in or 15 minutes in between other eye drops and Upneek. But they can definitely be used by people who use other eye drops and who use contacts. Okay, so let's get into these before and after photos. Now, all of these before and afters were taken in the same spot and all of them were taken about an hour and 15 minutes after the drops were administered, which I've already used these enough times, as well as these other people, to know that for all of us, any effects that we were going to see really happened in the first like 15 minutes. We did not have to wait, you know, hours to see, you know, any kind of change or anything like that. So for our first person who is in her early 20s, I would say that you can see an ever so slight change. Perhaps you can see a tiny, tiny bit more of the whites of her eyes. So I want you to take a long look at these before and afters and remember that the before is above and the after is below and you know, decide for yourself. I'm really curious after you see all four of these before and afters, what you will think. And I'm hoping you will let us know in the, I, I really, really do hope that you will let us know down below if you see any change. Now, the next person who is in her 30s, she actually has a tiny bit of a ptosis, a, an acquired a ptosis in one of her eyes. And um, we did the drops. And I think that we also did notice just a little bit more of the whites of her eyes, we could see them a little bit more. And then we feel like we can see a little bit less of her mobile lid. And I think that's because her eyelid did pop up just a tiny bit. Again, in my opinion, it's extremely subtle. Now, when we get to my eyes, what I did notice is that I can see less of my mobile lid, and I definitely think that my eyes got a little bit rounder, so they're definitely a little bit more open. Now, I did this this morning, and I did feel like when I was putting my makeup on that my eyes seemed a little bit you know, wider and brighter, but of course, they're gonna seem brighter because this is a vasoconstrictor. So not only is it going to open up the eyes just ever so slightly, but it can also brighten the whites of your eyes, which can also lead to a perception of brighter, wider, you know, bigger, bolder eyes just by virtue of taking away any of that red. So that's another kind of visual perception that you have to take, you know, take into account. Now, the final person that we can look at is in her mid fifties. And she was actually the initial reason why I even picked these up because she was so excited at the prospect of being able to open up her eyes. And I think that she's a primary example of somebody who has definitely thought about getting upper blepharoplasty, but when heard about these drops was like, hey, that's, you know, $200 seems like a drop in the bucket compared to going and getting surgery. I'm going to try that out. I can tell you that she's really underwhelmed. She did not feel like this did anything of great value for her enough to where she's not still, you know, looking at her eyes and thinking that, you know, at some point she may want to do an upper bleth, that kind of thing. So I think that the um, kind of takeaway here is that if you are thinking about getting these eye drops just because of cosmetic reasons, I guess you have to weigh out your budget and decide if $200 for 45 applications, which would do both eyes each time, is really worth it to you for a massively subtle difference. So subtle that the overarching theme is underwhelming. Now again, 
I think that the people that this works for, this really works for. And those are the people who have an actual ptosis. And so that one millimeter makes a massive difference for you, for them. I think that people who are just looking for doe eyes and just want, you know, to get some aesthetic change and they're thinking that it's going to make this massive difference in their eyes. I think that it's underwhelming. I think that it's a lot of money to spend for that. And I think that given the four different people who all tried it had kind of the same impression and every single one of us myself included thought two hundred dollars was a lot to pay for basically getting wider eyes with a little little tiny bit tiny bit more eye just a tiny tiny bit not enough not enough the other thing that i would recommend if you are still interested because i get that it's it's kind of uh it's intriguing no matter what i'm glad i got to try it right I would say find a few friends, go in on a box together, do not go and spend your money and get yourself a whole box and then be underwhelmed and have a whole box left. But maybe go in on it with three or four friends and split it up and all of you test it out. Or better yet, if you have a med spa that is carrying Upneak in your area, they probably will offer samples. Take a sample or two, test it out and really assess and then decide whether or not you want to spend your $200 because my guess is it probably won't be enough of a change for you to want to spend that $200. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope it was interesting. Let me know in the comments if you saw any differences between those before and afters. I'm super duper curious and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.